day four of the 2007 CONCACAF Gold Cup. The Home Depot Center in Carson, California is where the United States team will look to stretch an unbeaten streak under head coach Bob Bradley as they take on Trinidad and Tobago. This is game two for the United States in play in Group B. Alongside Shep Messing, I'm Steve Cangelosi, and it'll be a much different lineup for the United States coming up for this game against Trinidad and Tobago. Only one starter is back from that opening win against Guatemala, Shep. Why? Steve, that's absolutely unbelievable. Bob Bradley must feel for the first time that he has a tremendous amount of depth in the team. And he does. But remember, always great anticipation when the U.S. team goes on the field. And for the team they're playing, Trinidad and Tobago, this is a great opportunity. So Trinidad and Tobago, this is a must-win game for them. I can't wait to see what happens on the field. Tim Howard got the shutout in game one for the United States. It'll be the savvy veteran Casey Keller who gets the call today. Really starts like this. Have a lot to do with whether or not he'll be World Cup worthy at the age of 40. That's how old he'll be in 2010. Well, it's always a dilemma of every national team coach. Do I put the best starting 11 on the field to win Gold Cup? Or am I looking with an eye to the future Maybe so far as 2010. Trinidad and Tobago simply needs this game. They blew a one nothing lead in their opener against El Salvador. Today, they need a good effort against the United States. The opening kickoff is just moments away. This is Gold Cup 2007. At the Gatorade Sports Science Institute, we test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. The United States and Trinidad and Tobago. The match is just underway here at the Home Depot Center in Carson, California. And part of the new look for the United States, Jay Demerit plays it back to the goalkeeper, Casey Keller. So many changes in the U.S. lineup. Again, only one remaining starter from their game one victory. And in all the years you've been watching U.S. soccer, can you recall any radical change like this, Shep? Steve, I was just thinking about that. And the answer, a resounding no. I can never recall a time where a USA national team in two consecutive games that means something like this one does in, in the opening second game in group play, 10 different starting players. That is unbelievable. But again, I think a testimony to the depth of the U.S. team. Also, some of it by design, Steve, I think, to deal with the speed of Trinidad and Tobago. Among the changes for the United States, Eddie Johnson paired with Brian Ching up top for the U.S. Johnson came on as a substitute in that first game. Speed is his game. And for Trinidad and Tobago, Sion Power, the 23-year-old defender, will toss in from the far side of the field. Played all the way back. Thomas Nicholson has it now for Trinidad and Tobago and plays it forward. Up top, Daryl Roberts held in check in game one for his club. Failhaber tried to play it forward. He could not, and it's controlled by the team in red. United States mixing it up in so many ways. The veteran Steve Ralston is on that right flank. Justin Mapp, the 22-year-old who plays for MLS Chicago Fire, is on the left. They look for Johnson up top, the U.S. does. Getting a look at the bench for Trinidad and Tobago. Baptiste 8 and Baptiste 13. Errol McFarlane is an explosive forward. Where's number 9 available up top? Here comes the U.S. Down low, in front, looking for Brian Ching. Off the mark. Eddie Johnson with a shot. And that's deflected in front and cleared away. So right off the bat, that tandem Ching and Johnson with chances that they can't bury. Yeah, and right off the bat, eight red shirts in their own penalty area defending. And Williams, the goalkeeper, made the save at the near post. In open space, onside is Ching. Brian Ching in, puts it in front. Eddie Johnson with a shot and a save made by Jan Michael Williams, the goalkeeper. So they found a rhythm early on, the tandem of Johnson and Ching. Yeah, maybe Bob Bradley, that man is on to something. Right out of the box, Ching. 
Great ball over the top. Perfectly timed run. Brian Ching's going to cut it in and look for his teammate, Eddie Johnson, right where he should be. Edge of the six-yard box, trying to put it on goal, and it just gets deflected at the last moment. And a different look for the United States in more ways than one from that first game. Really, Taylor Twellman was a lone forward playing up top with help from Donovan and Beasley on the flanks. In comes Eddie Johnson again, but a flag does go up. He's off to the races early. Yeah, the question for me in this lineup, where will the playmaking leadership come in the midfield up front i love it because you have the speed of eddie johnson that's a very questionable offside to me he looked onside as that ball was played but i love the the speed and the size of that man eddie johnson combined with the rugged physical play of Brian Ching. Those two, if they develop a chemistry, should be a handful. Johnson had limited playing time in the World Cup. Brian Ching, part of that team, never got off the bench for the United States. U.S. controls in the midfield and now plays it back to Jonathan Spector. Plays it forward on the near side for Eddie Johnson. This will be a throw-in coming up for the United States. Spector from West Ham United of the English Premier League. Toss in, and the U.S. looks to control. Ching tries to shake off one defender. Now it's controlled by Failhaber. Benny Failhaber wheels and deals and plays it to Spectre. Spectre off the left foot in front. Coming out to punch it away. Jan Michael Williams and a player is down for Trinidad and Tobago. That's Anthony Noriega who went down hard. So did the goalkeeper, Williams. That does not look like... A good collision. I think the elbow of Williams catches his own player. Brian Ching, Noriega, and Williams all going for the same ball. And I believe it was actually the elbow of the goalkeeper that caught his own man. Anthony Noriega, the 26-year-old defender and no stranger to the United States. He played at George Mason University, attending that school. and. Sam's Army looks on in support of the United States, but concern on the field is for Noriega of Trinidad and Tobago in a big game for his club. So we'll sort this thing out. Many of the fans still remaining from the first game as well. As Guatemala defeated El Salvador by a final of one to nothing. They tend to Anthony Noriega, who is done for the match, and the substitution is made right away. Kristen Baptiste, number 13, will come on and Noriega will be carted off under the tunnel and perhaps to the hospital ASAP if we get an update we'll pass that along Justin Mapp tries to cross this for the United States comes down at the foot of Baptiste who has just checked in chance for the US though Mapp plays it across Spectre with a drive and oh that just goes high and wide well so far this US lineup looks good I talked about who was going to be the playmaker out of this midfield, and this is the man, I believe, Justin Mapp. Great skill on the ball, very mazy on his runs. He gets grabbed, he fights through it, cuts the ball back to Spectre. Spectre shoots like you would expect the defender to over the crossbar. And Mapp is an ex first round pick of DC United in Major League Soccer. That man, Spectre, formerly of Manchester United and Charlton. He's had good experience abroad, and he is only 21 years old. Played by the U.S. on the attack one more time into open space. Ching again, shot, save, Jan Michael Williams. And Ching went down hard. Well, Ching has been superb in the beginning of the game. The back line for Trinidad and Tobago has no clue what they're doing in terms of timing the run. They've been beaten three times already. U.S. plays it long, and this goes all the way into the Trinidad and Tobago area. Jan Michael Williams, the 22-year-old who lost the opener in group play, back getting another shot against the United States today. It's played in the midfield by the U.S., and now back to Specter. Off the right foot, plays this into open space. Mapp tries to be the first man to it. Justin Mapp showing speed right around power. Cross in front. Go! Brian Ching with the finish in front. The United States grabs a 1-0 lead. Oh, that was all Justin Mapp, though, down the left flank. I cannot believe it, Steve. We have just gotten a good look at the versatility of this lineup. And I'll tell you what, Justin Mapp 
took the left back power to school. I thought he had no chance of getting the ball. He absolutely outruns him. It looks like power is jogging here and watch Justin Mapp blows by him. Good vision. That's a perfect ball to Brian Ching. If you're power, there comes a point in that sequence where you just have to take the foul, don't you? Well, he took a bad angle defending his all angles. Power took a bad angle when he went at Justin Mapp, but one of the things about Justin Mapp that players who play against him will tell you, Steve, he's got a subtle change of gear, change of pace. He blew by him, and you give Brian Ching, it wasn't a difficult goal for him to connect on, but you've got to make a great run. And that man, my ex-teammate, Wim Reisbergen on the Cosmos, he is not happy. His team trails early on. Brian Ching, a man who once scored four goals in a game in Major League Soccer, Hawaiian-born. Club team, Houston Dynamo. Big goal to start things off for the United States. So the U.S. plays with a lead once again. 31st minute of play, we move on. Sam's Army with reason to cheer. Possession, though, for Trinidad and Tobago. This is Denzel Theobald, the only World Cup veteran on this roster for Trinidad and Tobago. Battle for the loose ball in the U.S. end. Comes down, and the U.S. looks to play it. Steve Ralston ahead into the midfield. Johnson on the ball. Eddie Johnson runs into traffic. U.S. plays it wide. Spectre steps up now and gives to Mapp. Justin Mapp cuts towards the center of the field and lays it off. This is Ricardo Clark who gives to Failhaber. Failhaber, open space. Johnson brings it down, but again, the offside flag goes up. Now all the great strikers do that tippy-toe along the back line. I'll tell you what. That's another bad call by the referee's assistant. He's in the perfect spot. Yeah, you're the guy. He missed that call, Steve. Eddie Johnson was at least a yard in an onside position when that ball was played. Flag goes up. Opportunity taken away. Back the other way. Trinidad and Tobago looks to push forward. Ball comes set. Aguiera plays it wide. Lofted high into the U.S. box and knocked away. Looking to clean up. The U.S. plays it out, and Mapp has it on the near side. Gives to Johnson, and the U.S. will slow the attack down as Spectre has it now and plays it over the midfield stripe. Settled down by Ching. U.S. plays it wide right. Ralston looks to play it forward. Controlled by TNT and on the back line. A 1-0 game if you're just joining us. Brian Ching with the goal for the United States. Steve, if you're Trinidad and Tobago, we have documented the disarray that this team has faced. Problems with players that competed in the World Cup in Germany. Basically, a whole new crew, a whole new team on the field. They have to get settled in, forget about that early goal, see if they could use some of their speed wide to get at the U.S. Into open space. This is played by Trinidad and Tobago. Darrell Roberts put this in the box, brought down. That's Baptiste who came into the game. Oh, Trinidad and Tobago wants a handball. There is none called against the U.S. Opportunity by the wayside right there. And the play gets chippy in the midfield. Whistle on the play. This will go the U.S. way. Yeah, they'll get the handball. It's not the one they wanted. This is the goal. And Justin Mapp, once he beat power, the rest was easy. He had a clear vision of Ching making his run, slid the ball behind the last defender. Ching did the rest. Back to live action. Ching again off to the races. Jan Michael Williams is there to gobble it up and control for Trinidad and Tobago, which needs a win, the 67th ranked team in the world. The team not complete, as Shet mentioned, on top of those players unavailable. They had a heck of a time getting here. Visa problems for eight different players as they were making their way into the United States. Ball is played by Jay Demerit back to Casey Keller in goal. From Lacey Washington, Casey Keller, who got all the action for the U.S. in the most recent World Cup. It is Tim Howard, the number one for the U.S. now, according to Bob Bradley. And Howard expected to get two of the three starts in group play. Michael Parkhurst 
Center defender for the United States getting his first cap. Here's a try for Trinidad and Tobago, but that's off the mark. The drive from long range, and it did come off the foot of Andre Toussaint. Now we talk about changes to the U.S. lineup, and then you talked about the veteran leadership of that man in goal, Casey Keller. And it's an issue, communication. He's got an entirely new back four in front of him. Back for the U.S. now as they fight on a counterattack. Shot from the right side. Off the mark as Eddie Johnson was making his way towards goal. Getting up is Frank Simic, one of the many, getting his first start in this tournament. Yeah, Simic slotted in at right back, but he's got the freedom to get forward when he wants to. You could tell he's a defender by that touch, but he does a good job taking opportunity. There's the bobble, and that makes his shot sail over the crossbar. But I was talking about Casey Keller. You know, you change one defender, you change two, but an entire new back four, Simic, Demerit, Parkhurst, and Spectre. So let's late look to make sure that communication is good between Casey Keller on his back line. This is Spectre who steps up for the toss in. Got a lot of play for the U.S. national team last year and then a shoulder injury ended any chance he had for a World Cup appearance. This is Map one more time. Looks to cross high. Trying to get on the other end of it for the United States with Steve Ralston getting up but that chance is by the wayside and the throw out by Jan Michael Williams. Well so far I like the movement. I like the whiff use of the whiff of the food by field by the U.S. but they still have to worry about some players that have capabilities. Roberts number 14 can score a goal for Trinidad and Tobago. Spawn number 16 out of the midfield. Theobald plays this into open space but Casey Keller is there and it seemed on that last attack by Trinidad and Tobago it was Kieno Thomas who moved over and maybe that's the way that they're going to combat the speed of Justin Mapp. We'll keep an eye on that to see whether that sticks around for a few moments battle for possession at the midfield stripe whistle on the play this will go the United States way Ricardo Clark we get a look at and here's the challenge by Simic a moment ago yeah just an ill-timed effort to get to that 50 50 ball in the air the referee Roberto Moreno from Panama this is played by the US Johnson heads it back Eddie Johnson Takes it on the far side and a whistle on the play. And again, a flag went up on that far side. Eddie Johnson, the hottest U.S. player coming into this tournament. Back-to-back -to -back hat tricks in Major League Soccer. One more time, Shep. Well, that's the second call in a row that I think the referee's assistant got all wrong. Eddie Johnson had been in an offside position. By the time the ball was played to him, a defender had gotten behind him. He was onside. For hit, that pass. Hit on De Pico from Cuba. Is the referee's assistant on the far side of the field. Trinidad and Tobago will push forward now, trailing one to nothing in this game. Silvio Spahn had that great goal. Maybe the best goal of the tournament so far in the opening game that they played versus El Salvador. Baptiste played it back. Shot from long range. That's Spahn who gave it a try. Couldn't get through. This is lifted high into the U.S. box. Parkhurst went up for it. Now Spectre heads it forward. A whistle on the play right there. Yeah, the foul was against Parkhurst. He had good position to try and win that ball. Knocked out of the way. Referee saw it, blew the whistle. There's Parkhurst. He's being grabbed from behind. Just the, the use of the left arm by... Toussaint to try and prevent Parkhurst from getting the ball. Casey Keller tees this up for the United States. Final moments of the first half. This one long into the attacking area, but now it's controlled by Trinidad and Tobago. They look to move forward. Kerry Baptiste, number eight, who checked in as a first half substitute, now working on that right side against Jonathan Spector. Long on the right side. Whistle on the play as they were looking to hook up with Daryl Roberts. Control. This is Kerry Baptiste who plays it into the box. It's a live ball looking for Kristen Baptiste, but it's off the mark and Casey Keller got it. That's as close as they've come. Well, again, Steve, I think you always have to respect the speed of the team from Trinidad and Tobago. And there we have it. Stoppage time 
posted its a whopping six minutes and that's due to the big injury that was suffered earlier on in this game. So time to play out before they kiss this first half goodbye. Noriega the defender for Trinidad and Tobago suffering a frightening injury in the early stages of this match. He lie on the field for several minutes. We play on. And that's always very unsettling to a team when one of their comrades goes down in a violent collision. Maybe we'll get another look at it. I really thought it was his own goalkeeper Williams that inadvertently caught him with an elbow to the head. Pass intercepted. Off to the races for the U.S. is Spectre who plays it forward. Ching with a little one touch. Eddie Johnson tried to play it. Whistle on the play as Johnson was fouled. And the U.S. controls at midfield. Yeah, I like the effort by Eddie Johnson, though. Ball had been played to Ching. Ching flicked it really without control up in the air, and Eddie Johnson never quit on it. This is Parkhurst getting his first start, first appearance ever for the United States. Lofts this into the attacking area. Silvio Spahn is back to play it now. Yeah, that's the man, I think, for Trinidad. Spahn that has to get forward, get into the attacking part of the field. You talked about his spectacular goal in the first game. 40-yard free kick. He just let it rip. On the attack now is Theobald. He moves forward, but a whistle behind the play. And that's Kristen Baptiste brought down, and the foul is called. Bob Bradley unbeaten as U.S. coach thus far. A little bit of uh, use of the left arm by Steve Ralston. We've played more than three minutes in added time in the first half. Set piece coming up for Trinidad and Tobago here as Casey Keller looks on. After this game, his next appearance will be his 100th for the U.S. From long range. Oh, it just sailed wide of goal. Having the right idea to try it again from about 40 yards was Silvio Spahn. Yeah, talk about confidence. Look at this ball bend. Casey Keller was going the wrong way. Look at the swerve on that ball. Oh, wow. Casey Keller was totally going the wrong direction. Spahn can really strike a ball on a set piece. And back the other way. Here comes Trinidad and Tobago into open space. Number 11, Toussaint, trying to push forward. And Casey Keller doesn't like how that developed. Corner kick is coming up for Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, Casey Keller, a great goalkeeper and a great leader. He knows he's got a brand new back four in front of him. He's not happy with how they're marking up. Vim Reisbergen looks on. Corner kick, it'll be taken by Spahn. Far corner, in swinger, in front, punched out in front by Keller. Long rebound comes out. U.S. tries to control. That ball was going in. That was a great corner kick. Skied high at the top of the box. Now we get a whistle on the play, and this will go against Trinidad and Tobago. Casey Keller made that look easy, Steve, but watch this ball. This ball is going on goal and in. He's got a player in front of him. Casey Keller makes it look easy. Wicked bend on the ball. He knows he can't hold on. If he doesn't get two fists, that's a goal. Back the other way now, trying to make it happen for Trinidad and Tobago. They force another corner kick. This will come out of the shade now and into the sun-filled portion of the field. And possibly the final chance for Trinidad and Tobago in this first half. Five minutes have elapsed. Struck and immediately knocked out. Ball bounds near the near side. Back the other way, Eddie Johnson now off to the races. Looking to make the most of a final chance for the U.S. Plays it into open space. On the ball for the U.S. Map with a shot, save in front. Jan Michael Williams stopped it. Terrific opportunity for the United States to double the lead. It's Justin Mapp again, cuts it back to the left peg. Williams makes the save. Mapp playing the opposite side. He started out on the left, now goes right. United States will take a 1-0 lead to the half against Trinidad and Tobago. The lone goal scorer in the match is Brian Ching. We'll be right back.
like a pro. Play like a pro. Tackle tough jobs. Dominate the game. Destroy the competition. Go professional. Choose Makita. Game two for the United States of the 2007 Gold Cup, and they're in the same position at halftime that they were in game one, sitting with a 1-0 lead. Alongside Shet Messing, I'm Steve Cangelosi. Ten new faces in the starting lineup. You were saying that's unheard of, but how are all the new guys meshing after 45 minutes? Well, Steve, I think they've done well, especially the trio of Brian Ching, Eddie Johnson, and Justin Mapp. I like their speed. I like their size. I like their strength. I like the creativity of Justin Mapp. And most of the chances in that first half, indeed, for the men in white, the United States. Let's take a look at first half highlights. Plenty of action in the first half. Look at this ball over the top. Brian Ching beats the back four. Williams makes the save. Look at the canny speed by Justin Mapp. He's going to slide this in the six-yard box. Brian Ching makes it 1-0. And one more look for Ching, the Hawaiian-born forward, getting his first start of the tournament. United States on the attack moments later, and they nearly doubled the lead right there with Frank Sinek. Yeah, the U.S. attack, and Casey Kelly defended this corner kick. And Shet Messing made the point during the game that that's a very underrated save by Casey Keller. Why? Well, he's got four new players in the back. It's a swerving corner kick, actually dipping and going two goal. He's got a Trinidad and Tobago player fronting him. He makes the body adjustment, uses two fists, punches it out. And cause for concern for Trinidad Tobago, not only the score, but seemingly a more important issue. Anthony Noriega left this game early on. He was taken to the hospital, and the update from the Trinidad and Tobago press officer is that he was alert and woke up on his way to the hospital. So in that sense, good news for Trinidad and Tobago. Now they'll try to storm a comeback against the United States. The second half is just moments away. Gatorade Sports Science Institute. We test athletes in the lab. Because we know they'll be tested on the field. Gatorade, the most tested sports drink on the planet. The second half set to begin at Carson, California, and the United States working on a shutout. They have played better than 135 minutes of soccer in this tournament. They have yet to surrender a goal. In that sense, positive stuff for the United States, and now they'll look for their second win of this tournament and two wins in group play in the Gold Cup. Well, not mathemat mathematically, but realistically, you've wrapped up a berth in the knockout round. This one is immediately played back into the Trinidad and Tobago area and controlled by number 17, Sean Power. No changes for the United States at the start of the second half as they move in white from left to right on your screen. Brian Ching, the lone goal of the match to put the U.S. on top. Trinidad and Tobago plays this into open space. Power moved it forward, looking for Daryl Roberts up top, but this will come back the other way. Well, let's take a look at the delivery of the ball and the run. Wow. U.S. got lucky on that. Hey, he's made mistakes for both teams. That should have been onside, Steve. Two keys to the second half, I feel, for the U.S., Steve. Do not allow this Trinidad and Tobago team to get any confidence in the middle of the field, pressure the ball. Second component, go get another goal. They got the goal against Guatemala, the U.S. did, but they struggled for the rest of the game, so I think it's important to try and get a second one. And now a substitution for the United States as Landon Donovan comes on. 
in place of Benny Failhaber. So you talked about winning that possession battle in the midfield, of which Failhaber has done a very good job in the first game and a half. Played into open space, but arguably the biggest star the U.S. national team has, Donovan, is on the field to start the second half of play. Yeah, and Steve, that gives the different balance to the midfield for the U.S. I talked about finding a way to get a second goal. Failhaber and this man, Ricardo Clark, were two holding defensive midfielders. Now you've taken Failhaber out, putting Landon Donovan in. He's a pure attacking player. So that's a substitution made to go get the second goal. Keller looks on. Free kick coming up for Trinidad and Tobago. This is Spawn. Guess what he's going to do? This time he miss hits it wide right. He is not shy from about 35 or 40 yards. Well, you take free kicks like the goal he scored in the first game against El Salvador. The free kick he took against Casey Keller in the first half. You keep hitting free kicks like that, some team's going to sign you. Keller with the goal kick for the United States lets it fly. Far side of the field that's Kerry Baptiste trying to control for Trinidad and Tobago. Foul is called and the United States will push forward the throw in from the far side of the field. Spectre with the toss in. Tries to send it in the direction of Ching. Ball comes loose all the way back to Simic. Frank Simic, Sheffield Wednesday is his club in England. He moved to that country when he was 12, crossed by Ralston in front. Looking for Ching on the run, but this bounds all the way to the near side of the field, controlled nicely by Kristen Baptiste, and Trinidad and Tobago looks to push out. 1-0, the United States on top. Toussaint tries to shake loose with it. Darrell Roberts now lays it off. Kerry Baptiste, far side of the field, and he's got a head of steam. Looks to get around Jonathan Spector. Kerry Baptiste hits the dirt. The 25-year-old midfielder showing a burst of speed as Spector got back on defense. That's Vim Reisbergen, the coach of Trinidad and Tobago, named to the post one year ago. United States on the attack again. Donovan just entered the game. Gives up the ball with a lazy pass. Kerry Baptiste has it for Trinidad. Well, if you're the U.S., Steve, I really think you have to pressure the ball a little bit more. You do not want to allow Trinidad to develop some kind of pace and rhythm. In the midfield, they get it. Toussaint lays it off. Nice job by the U.S. to defend, and they come back the other way now. Waiting for it is Eddie Johnson who looks to turn on the Jets now. Johnson decides to play it wide. Map crosses in front, headed, saved by Jan Michael Williams. That's Ching looking for a second of the game. Oh, what a save by Williams. That's a great ball in by Justin Map. Look at the header, right hand gets down to the near post. That's a world-class save. Beautiful service. And the header by Ching denied. That's the tandem that created the goal. And how comfortable does Justin Mapp just appear in this game? He looks terrific, Steve. And with Rolston out wide right, Ching and Eddie Run Johnson making runs in the middle, Justin Mapp creating, they look very good. And Michael Williams with the goal kick. And now a chance for Trinidad and Tobago. Kristen Baptiste deflected off a U.S. defender Parkhurst, and that'll create a corner kick coming up for Trinidad and Tobago. Now you talked about the man in the middle, Parkhurst. He's in the right place. That ball deflected out. Demerit, the other central defender. U.S. will have to contend with this corner kick. Parkhurst, Major League Soccer's Rookie of the Year in the United States back in 2005. This is Span who will take the corner kick. And a key sequence for Trinidad and Tobago here. Being shut out so far by the United States. Lofted in front, deflected back. Donovan has some open grass to run. Plays it ahead, waiting for it, and back to Donovan. Golden opportunity for the U.S. Landon Donovan onside, moves in to Eddie Johnson, giving go! Eddie Johnson doubles the U.S. lead. It's 2-0 United States. All on a counterattack. 
Landon Donovan had open grass and room to roam. There's not a better player in the open field than Landon Donovan. He beats the offside trap, gets forward, slots it over to Eddie Johnson. He's a thing of beauty in open space and no chance at all for Williams. That is using speed, that's using smarts, and Eddie Johnson gobbles it up. Eddie Johnson, who was red hot in club play in the United States, nine goals in his first nine games of the season, and his first start of this Gold Cup, he's cashed in, doubling the United States lead. This makes it 2 0 now, the Johnson goal coming in the 53rd minute of play. Steve Cancelosi, we talked about 10 new players in the U.S. lineup when this game started. Now you throw Landon Donovan in. I like when players complement each other. You have the dazzling runs of Landon Donovan, Justin Mapp in the midfield, Eddie Johnson, Brian Ching up front, and we just saw Bob Bradley speaking to another young holding midfielder, Michael Bradley. So lots of depth on this U.S. team. The United States now trying to close the deal. They've gone this far today without the services of Aguchi on Yewu, the one player today we know would not start. He was red carded the first time around. Donovan's out for more. Landon Donovan lays it off. Eddie Johnson now plays it wide left. Justin Mapp cross in front. Knocked away to the foot of Eddie Johnson. Lays it back. Here's a drive from long range and it sails high of goal. The United States had the build up there and it all came to the foot of Jonathan Spector at the end. Well, they're having fun right now, Steve. Plenty of wide open spaces. Final pass back to Jonathan Spector, but they are toying with Trinidad and Tobago. Spector's had a strong start at left back for the United States, and it appears Brian Ching, the man who opened the scoring today, is indeed done, and he comes out for Bob Bradley's son, Michael Bradley. The 19-year-old midfielder is in. Yeah, Brian Ching looked look very good. And now with Michael Bradley slipping into the lineup, Landon Donovan can tuck up front with Eddie Johnson. Andre Pacheco played that forward for Trinidad. Donovan on the ball, back for Bradley, his first touch. To the U.S. back line as Spectre plays it forward. 2-0 game, the U.S. on top. Map. Just turns the Jets on, plays it wide. Opposite side, U.S. on the attack with Frank Simic moving forward. Tries to get around, Kristen Baptiste and now lays it off. Possession game for the U.S., Ralston played it. Across for Simic, who takes a hit from Baptiste. Frank Simic, once a member of the Arsenal Youth System in England. Well, there is the foul. Both Simic and Spectre on the left side of the field have gotten forward. They haven't done much once they get there, but so far no mistakes by the new back line for the U.S. The shutout continues. They have not allowed a goal in the tournament. Pacheco tries to play it forward. United States now with a chance on a counterattack. Steve Ralston moves down the right side. Goes towards goal, but that sails way high over the crossbar. And the all-time leader in minutes played in Major League Soccer sent that awry. Yeah, he's shaking his head. Very uncharacteristic, unforced error by Steve Walt Ralston. One of the best in terms of service from the right side of the field. And you have to ask yourself, watching this game, Steve, is the U.S. that good? Or is Trinidad and Tobago so much in disarray? Bob Bradley looks on. The record under Bob Bradley going into this tournament was perfect. The United States 6-0-1 since Bradley took over as head coach, replacing Bruce Arena. Ricardo Clark feels pressure from behind, now lays it off. Michael Bradley gives to Simic, getting up now on the right side. Clark in the corner, plays it for the United States. Loses his balance in the corner and back the other way comes Trinidad and Tobago. Theobald pushes forward and plays it ahead. A loss for Trinidad Tobago and their hopes of advancing into the quarterfinals would be gone with a defeat today. Yeah, look, 
They look Trinidad and Tobago like a tired and dejected team, Steve. Their back line when they win the ball, they're not even making an effort to push up the field. They're sitting back top of their own penalty area. Bradley lays it off for the U.S. in the direction of Eddie Johnson. That's knocked away. Kerry Baptiste plays it back. Trinidad and Tobago just trying to set up to get something going. Theobald plays it forward. Toussaint. Nice job to avoid Bradley and continue. Plays it wide. Right side. Kerry Baptiste. But the flag indeed went up again. Substitution coming up for Trinidad and Tobago. Andre Pacheco is out. Number seven is Trent Noel who checks into the game. The 31 year old defender. Some fresh legs on. Vim Reisbergen just trying to shake it up at this point. U.S. controls on the near side. Ralston plays it back for Ricardo Clark. Far side of the field, it's Specter. Deep in the Trinidad area, pressure applied. Let's see how they call this. It's over the goal line, and a goal kick will come up. Pressure applied by Taylor Twelman now, who's checked in for the United States. There's shield, the shielding of the ball goes out for the goal kick. Taylor Twelman feisty, trying to track that down, keep it in play, couldn't do it. Wellman in a starting role the first time around for the United States in the win over Guatemala replacing Eddie Johnson in the lineup this time around U.S. settles it down Donovan on the ball plays it wide to the left U.S. plays it Michael Bradley gives it up and now gets it back Bradley playing professionally in Holland at the age of 19 Demerit Across for Simic. Confidence building game for the back four of the United States. None of whom started the last time around. Yeah, tremendous effort by this team, but it's getting a little static right now. Not enough players making runs off the ball. Steve Ralston loses balance, but shakes a defender and moves forward. Plays it into the corner now where Clark has it. Ricardo Clark set to cross on a bounce. It's cleared away. U.S. will get a set piece coming up a quarter kick as that was knocked away by power who's had a rough outing today. Ricardo Clark in the United States has played in Major League Soccer for several years. His coaches have said through that time they'd like to see a little bit more bite in his game which he appears to be slowly developing now. Well again you talk about depth positionally. Here's the ball played in. Demerit played it in. Going up was Twelman just off the mark, and Jan Michael Williams has it. Now I was talking about depth at the position of Ricardo Clark, that holding midfield spot. They have the U.S. Failhaber, Ricardo Clark, Mastroeni. The retirement of Claudio Reyna left a little bit of a hole there, so who's the new player to get tucked in? In the past, that position held by players like Chris Armas, U.S. veteran, Kerry Zavagnin, but a new group coming in. And it's one of the things a new coach who comes on board will often do, just investigate new blood. And Bob Bradley's done that in the early stages. Yeah, and of course, the other one I didn't mention is Michael Bradley at that spot. So between Failhaber, Michael Bradley, Ricardo Clark, Mastroeni, depth at every position, a good little game by Eddie Johnson. You know, Eddie Johnson, Steve, one of the few players up top who's better running without the ball than he is with the ball at his feet makes great runs to get behind the defense Donovan into open space for Twelman back to Donovan but he can't control and it's taken away they had the right idea they just couldn't finish I like the attitude with which Landon Donovan has come into this game other players of his stature hey coming in as a second half substitute he's running he's gunning he's working no attitude problem with Landon Donovan not starting which he's not accustomed to doing but again maybe the rules and logic for coaches are a little bit different in this situation where you have two games just two days apart and obviously that plays into Bob Bradley's decision to start so many new players today but he mixed it up big time well, Steve the same goes for every team in the world 
This tournament is no exception. It's great when you have players who are fighting to be in the starting 11. This has been a good effort by the USA team. DeMarcus Beasley appears to be getting the day off for the United States. Throw in near side. That's Kristen Baptiste who's set to toss in. Time very much a factor now for Trinidad and Tobago. Here at the Home Depot Center, Parkhurst is back to play it for the U.S. Parkhurst gets it back. U.S. kills a little clock here. Right side. Simic pushes forward. Ralston withdrawn. Possession game is all U.S. at this point. But now a takeaway. U.S. lost control and a chance now for Trinidad. Shot saved by Casey Keller. He can't pick that ball up. Instead has to play it with the foot. This will result in a corner kick, but the U.S. dodges a bullet. Yeah, Casey Keller in the right place. Good positionally. I thought there was a foul in the midfield. The referee didn't call it against Michael Bradley. That's how Bradley lost the ball, and now you're right. He can't pick it up. Knocks it off his own player for the corner. Kerry Baptiste to let it ride, and Keller has not been called upon to make many, but that one, one of his best. Ball comes back to the foot of Baptiste, and again Keller with a driving save. Referee's going to whistle an infraction or an offside, but I don't think there was an offside on the initial shot, and that's the one Casey Keller saved. That that's why it's so important for the U.S. to have gotten that second goal. Let's look right here. That's onside. The offside after this shot on the rebound, but Casey Keller with a fine save with the ball bending away. Spahn once again threatening. We are now in added time in this second game. The U.S. trying to preserve the win and the shutout for Casey Keller. Ralston. Plays this deep, off the mark. This will be a throw in for Trinidad and Tobago. Sensing the end is near perhaps. Sion Power marches forward, tosses in. The United States has never lost a game in group play. 19-0-1 heading into this game. On the verge of getting their 20th win. Three minutes posted. A minute already in the books. U.S. controls now. Donovan just looks like he's having fun out there now. Gets it back on a run, but Jan Michael Williams is there to cut it off as Taylor Twellman was looking for Donovan there. Yeah, reversal of roles. Usually landed Donovan, the one chipping it over to Taylor Twellman. Bradley has it for the United States now. Spectre. Into the midfield, a little one touch by Donovan. Ball deflected, Simic has it and plays it wide. Steve Ralston on the ball now for the United States. Into open space, U.S. on the attack again. Far side of the field, here they come. Matt, center of the field. Clark now, tees this up long range, shot deflected. Ricardo Clark gets it again and plays it back. Simic is on the ball now for the U.S. Near side. Stoppage in play as the flag went up. They say the ball went out as Ralston fought for it. I think they're going to whistle a foul before the ball went out. A little bit of a clip when Ralston had it. It'll be a free kick for the U.S. Under a minute to go. U.S. trying to put the finishing touches on the win for that man, Bradley. Jan Michael Williams barks at his defense and the U.S. will just play ball possession here likely. Bradley has it and plays it back. A 2-0 game. The United States appears as if it's on its way to round two of this Gold Cup. They've never failed to get out of group play. Donovan on the near side can't control. This will come back the other way. Keller on the verge of getting the shutout in his 99th cap for the United States. Keon Thomas plays it. That'll do it. The match is over. The United States celebrating a 2 to nothing win here in California. For the U.S., Brian Ching made it 1-0.
Eddie Johnson scored to double that lead. We're back with a wrap from Carson, California. The U.S. wins it two to nothing. Work like a pro. Play like a pro. Tackle tough jobs. Dominate the game. Destroy the competition. Go professional. Choose Makita. Second win for the United States in this 2007 Gold Cup. And in those two victories, they don't surrender a goal. Alongside Shep Messing, I'm Steve Cangelosi. Another shutout victory. Casey Keller wasn't called upon to do much, but when he was needed, he did come up big. Well, the starting back four in front of Casey Keller, we talked about it, Steve, brand new players. They really weren't challenged. Good work in the holding part of the midfield. Solid effort by the U.S. Highlights? There were many. Let's take a look at the U.S. victory. Plenty of action from the U.S. Ball over the top. Brian Ching into the box. That's a big save by Williams. And Justin Mapp this time with explosive speed. And now Brian Ching, another chance he won't miss this. Well, that's terrific finishing, but it's all made possible by Justin Mapp gets behind the defense. You know, United States remained on the attack. And this shot, Frank Simic nearly doubling the U.S. lead in that sequence. End of the first half, an opportunity on the corner kick. Casey Keller with the save. We talked about how comfortable Justin Mapp looked in this game, and in the second half, indeed, that continued. The cross in front, Brian Ching. That's great service, but this is even better. Landon Donovan, open space, cuts to the goal, looks up, finds his teammate, and Eddie Johnson slots it home. Two nothing victory for the U.S. and in those two games, amazingly, 21 players on this U.S. roster have seen action. That builds a couple of things. Probably it builds camaraderie among the guys getting in, chance to contribute, and also builds a sense of competition, doesn't it? I tell you what, Steve, I think that's a great thing that the U.S. team has done. What I like about it now, Bob Bradley can pick the combinations he likes best. He has Eddie Johnson, strength in Brian Ching. Cunningness and Landon Donovan. He's got a lot of options. United States now has one game left in group play. That'll be against El Salvador, but again, they have virtually clinched a berth in the quarterfinal round. This is more of a chance for Bob Bradley to really experiment a little bit and see who matches up well with whom. They'll also get Aguchi and Yewu back from his red card. We would believe he would get a start against El Salvador. Well, I think you're right. That third game will be for Bob Bradley and the coaching staff to try and put together what they think is their best starting 11 going forward. Trinidad and Tobago, you can only say this. It's been a bad experience so far in this Gold Cup. It seems like nothing went right since this tournament got underway without their best players and clearly not playing their best game. At the Home Depot Center, Carson, California, United States wins it 2 to nothing is your final, and they know they'll have a place in the knockout stage of the tournament. For Shep Messing, I'm Steve Cangelosi. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage of Day 4 of the Gold Cup.